All right. So now that we know set function is not going to be synchronous, now let's look at the solution. You see, there's another way how we can update the state, and that is using the function approach. So instead of passing the new state value, like we have been doing for the last whatever videos, we can actually pass in the function. And as a first parameter, by default, we get the current state. Now, since this is a parameter, yes, Bobby Lee or Joe Coy is an awesome name. But a more common convention is to call this current state, previous state, old state, whatever. I mean, again, you can name this banana, it's still going to work. And yes, it's by default provided by React. It effectively just provides whatever you have currently in a state. So in this case, it would provide that number right before the update. And then in here, we just need to set up the functionality where essentially we must return something. And this is one of the gotchas with this approach. If you don't return anything, it will right away fail. Why? Well, because there is no value anymore. It's now going to be undefined. Remember, in JavaScript functions return by default, what? They return undefined. So you must return that value. And whatever you're going to return from that function, that is going to be the new value. So let's try this one out. Where essentially, I'm going to remove this one. We'll pass in the function. Yes, this is what we're doing. We're passing function into the set value. That's the approach. And like I said, if you simply just leave it the way it is, this is going to be undefined. Now, I do want to showcase that we'll access the state value. And again, in my case, I'm going to call this current state. So this is the state right before the update. Hopefully that is clear. And yes, the reason why I'm being so annoying and repeating that this is provided by React, because this is also one of those things that I see a lot in course Q&A. Yes, we're not doing anything. Right out of the gate, React just provides that value. So let's go here with current state and I'm purposely returning nothing, just so you can see that essentially the functionality is not going to work. Notice we get back undefined. Now we did get the correct zero over here, right? So if we have some kind of functionality that relies on that latest value, we need to use this approach. Now, since I'm recording this in tutorial, I'm going to be more explicit. Keep in mind that, of course, you can simply return that new value. In my case, though, I'm going to go with const, then I'll say new state is equal to, and then I'm just going to go with current state, and then plus one. And now let's just go with return and new state. And I'm not going to log the new state. Hopefully it's clear that, yes, it's going to be latest value. So we go over here and notice everything still works, only in this case, we access that very latest value. And in the following video, we'll take a look at a nice example where such approach makes a lot of sense. Now, before you ask, do you have to set up set functions every time with function? I mean, it's really up to you. There's going to be some instances where you definitely need to do that. Something we're going to cover in the next video. But should you go back and now refactor every set function instance to this one? No. I mean, if it works with just a regular approach where you pass in the new value, you can definitely leave it. Some people use function for everything. That's pretty much their preference. There's nothing wrong with that, but there is no clear rule that you always, always have to use this one. Again, there's going to be some instances where you must use it. Otherwise, the functionality is not going to work. But if you're just changing, I don't know, a list to an empty list, no, you don't have to pass in the function. You can just pass in the new value.